I travel a lot. I'm just like one of you guys. Uh, I'm 55 years old, but I'm you know, very basic in my way. I learned a lot from the road, uh, more from the road than I did. The road, going to the university was teaching me more than what they taught me in the university, to be honest about it. Life, you know. Now, one of the most important things that's coming on most people's mind these days is what's happening not to us, but what's happening around us. And that has become very much more important because of the connectivity issue. People are more globalized, people are more well connected. And because of that single reason, people tend to get information in a flash of a second. You would know exactly what's happening in a storm, second to second, sitting anywhere in the world as it's approaching the United States. It cost United States last month over $50 billion. But what really happened? And why does such storms arise? And why do these issues mean a lot, especially to islands like the Maldives or to the islands like Seychelles? Climatic change is an issue which has been going on long before any of the universities existed, long before any time. But we were not aware about it. And my job is to make you all even more aware about situations that are happening around the world. I am going to present to you a couple of very interesting uh, videos as well. And I'd like you to watch it very beautifully. What I'm trying to show you here is basically a film that was done for BBC. And uh, it's a short film, but the concept is basically, you tell me what did the film teach you. It's just a five minutes film. So can we have these lights off? Okay, so enjoy. Can you just close these lights, please? Thank you. Okay, a hundred years from now, it doesn't matter how much was in my bank account or the sort of the house that I had lived in or the kind of the car I drove. But the world may be different because I was important in the life of a child. This is what drives me, is you people, to do what I do, is to teach, because it's you people who drive me to teach, because I feel I make a positive impact on my students. This is the reason why I teach. I'm going to show you this film now. And it's uh, the volume there. What did you feel? What did you feel, honestly? There's a lot we have to learn. There's a lot that we can teach. We need peace and we need to pay attention. What about you? I feel like he said, like, there's a lot to learn. Even though we are a small country, I feel like we can do something for the world. And yourself? Correct. You saw? That it's showing the extreme beauty around the world that maybe um, I had not even thought about it before. And now, after seeing it, I'm extremely moved. It's, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and yourself, young man? Um, the 
seen the movie, I feel like the world has a lot of beauty to offer us. All right. A lot of unknown things. You see, unknown things. it's a very well-known phenomena that our eyes show us everything, but we see only what we want to see. What we are looking for is what we see, not what we are not looking for. So we got to start looking for the right things because the world is showing us, but we are not listening, we are not looking, we are not listening. And that's why these problems are coming. And these issues are arising basically because we just want to see things our way, not the way it is. And the next presentation that I want to show you and by the way, all these presentations, including this video clip and all the other stuff that I'm showing you guys, I'm going to leave, it, leave a copy, a couple of copies here so that you, you can share it on your, with your other students who couldn't make it or through the chat, chat rooms or uh, internet facilities that you all have, you know. Because the more people become aware of it, the better it is. So it, it all adds up at the end of the day. Before the year 2050, about 150 million people may be forced to leave their homes. Okay? <clears throat> More than 50% of the world population lives today in regions likely to be struck by at least one of the following disasters. Earthquake, flood, drought, landslide, cyclone, or volcanic eruptions. The average sea level should continue to rise by some 60 centimeters. By 2100, this will affect 20% of the world population. Despite the fact that coral reefs cover less than 0.5% of the ocean floor, it is estimated that more than 90% of marine species are either directly or indirectly dependent on them. Move on fresh water consumption multiplied by six during the 20th century, while the population tripled during the same period. Bottled water costs 1,000 times more than tap water. A fifth of the global population has no access to drinking water. Every year, five million people die of contaminated water. This is more than three million deaths, more than AIDS each year. Diarrhea caused by poor water quality kills 1.8 million people each year, of which 1.6 million are children below the age of five years. In liters, a Parisian 240 liters and an American consumes 600 liters a day. Uh, annually, sorry. 21 countries around the world suffer from a lack of water. 12 of them are in the Middle East. Subsistence of over a billion people, that's one sixth of the world population. Just to give you an idea, 7 billion estimated population on the planet, 1 billion on this side of the mountain, 1 billion on that side of the mountain. This side is India, that side is China. Whatever happens on that mountain, 2 billion people is going to get affected. Glacial melting, glacial bursting, is going to impact 2 billion people. Third of the population is directly impacted just by the snow range and the ice range along the Himalayan mountains. Not because I'm from India, but I, I just mean that's a fact. I mean, whichever way you go. I also teach at the Nepal University. And uh, this is exactly what's happening. Everything is driven by water. You don't have water? You know, when you think about water, you think about thirst, right? How will I quench thirst? When I think about water, I think about food because you cannot have food without water. Agriculture cannot exist without water. So to have food, you need to have water. It's not about just drinking water and surviving. Of course, that's there. But over and above that, we need food. And unless we don't have food, we cannot have food because we don't have enough water to develop it. It's so beautiful, seven billion people. Let's take a worst case scenario, even two billion. It's amazing, because what I'm going to show you further down, exactly that's what happens on other, on other planets in our solar system. So we have to really thank Mother Earth for giving us what we really need and conserve our resources, be it, I, I'm so happy. I was here 
eight years ago, nine years ago. I didn't see your wind, wind farms before. Now I see them harnessing energy through wind. Perfect. Solar paneling on most of the hotels, most of the chalets, you know, with, uh, for water heating. Excellent. So I see that. It's good. And that's why, you know, you have universities, you have education. You all have this to be message forward. It's you who's going to impact the others. So it's extremely important to conserve and to be aware of what's around us. Since 1980, the volume of garbage generated per inhabitant in industrialized countries has tripled. Every year, plastic waste causes the death of a million birds, 100,000 marine mammals, and an incalculable number of fish. 1.7 million living species are known. 10 to 100 million remain to be discovered. The degradation of an ecosystem is the first cause that leads to the extinction of species. Worldwide, one in four mammals, one in eight birds, and one in three fish, and two in five amphibian species are threatened by extinction. By the year 2050, the increase in the average global temperature could lead to the extinction of 25% of living species. Illegal trade in endangered species is worth between five and ten billion dollars annually and represents one of the major causes of disappearances of these species. Eighty-seven of the world's teenagers live in developing countries. Women and teenagers are subjected the most to victimization in wars. Worldwide of all, 35 million refugees and homeless people, 80% are women and teenagers. Women represent 70% of the poorest populations and 50% of these women live in rural areas. Among children who go to school, 80% will never reach secondary level. Tourism. Move forward. The world spends on military a thousand billion US dollars and 60 billion US dollars only on development aid annually. Of the world's 226 countries, approximately 140 organize pluralistic elections. Coffee is a highly climate dependent crop and slight temperature change can risk livelihood of millions. Rising temperatures due to climatic change could mean wild Arabian coffee is extinct in 70 years. So let's say, if not you, when your child becomes 50, there's no coffee available. Can you believe that? Can you believe waking up and not being stimulated by coffee or tea? Because it's going to go extinct. And I'm going to produce some handouts to give to you on this coffee issue as well. So just think how fast things are changing. You know, from, from the watch which had two hands, you came to a digital clock. You forgot the watch with the two hands. You came to the digital clock. You forgot the digital clock because it's on your phone. You don't need a watch, all right? You never ask someone what's the time. You walk down to Seychelles Airport anytime. Stand at the arrival or departure section. Count the number of people who are there. 70% of them will be using an electronic telephone. Any form, either through SMS, either through internet, but they will be using electronic communication. You know, the pen has disappeared, the telex has disappeared, the telegram has disappeared, the phone bag has disappeared. All these things have changed. We've adapted ourselves. We've adjusted to it. You know, what, what we used to do, three minutes. You know, it used to take us two hours to do our homework. Now it takes us three minutes to cut, paste, and put it from Google straight on the desk. <laughs> they make so much of a difference, not only to us, but to our future generations. Your wife, in terms of the children you'll have or the children you have. And then moving forward, you start thinking, this house is going to be too small for my grandchildren, right? So why are you not aware of the fact that there's so many things other than the house, other than your education, other than your job that have a direct impact on you? The quality of air you breathe, the quality of water you drink, the quality of food you get, 
look at the quality of fish that you're getting today in your country and see how it's progressing. Do research and see how was it 20 years ago. Do research and see how is it now and why. Even this short strip of mangroves that's growing along the runway, you know. It's yeah? It's receding. Yeah, it's receding, exactly. But why? Why is it happening right in front of us and no one can stand up and think, what are you waiting? For the bomb to explode in the house or are you waiting for it to, you know? It's not good enough, it's exploding outside the house. You want it in the house. So you guys really try and understand that whatever you do, and it's not that seashells is only going to be affected. If you guys get hit, all of us get hit. There's no single human being in this planet who can say that he's individually different than everybody else. And he cannot survive without you. We all need each other as a link to survive. And that's how it's going to impact us. It's a complete domino effect. 20 million people estimated dying. 20 million of a population of 7 billion through bird flu. Countries like China, Brazil, India already have provided provisions where you have large chunks of population for bird flu, epidemics, things like that. So the issue is we have to, we have to take care of everything which is around us. Cutting down these trees, you know, your forests, you have preserved the, the water around you naturally as well as the government has taken care of it and the wisdom of you young people to keep it that way. So this is exactly the main message that I wanted to take forward for you. Seeing the first film, you all fully understand, right? That we have a beautiful planet. Correct? Now, if I was to pick this class up and take you guys on the surface of the moon and actually sit on the surface of the moon, wouldn't it be great for you to look how beautiful it is? Every day when you come out of your house, what's the first thing that you do? Look up in the sky. Why? You want to see the quality of light. You want to see the quality of air. It's very important for you to watch the sun, right? In the same manner, if you were on the moon inhabited, what would be the most beautiful thing for you to see? Would be to see the beauty of the earth and to see how it rises across the moon. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you now. I'm actually, you've seen so many beautiful sunrises and sunsets, but today when you go home and meet your family, tell them the professor showed you how the earth rises. And not many people have seen that sitting on the moon, but I'm going to show that to you. So can you just close that light again? Thank you. Beautiful moon. Imagine every night if you were on the moon, standing out and looking out at the earth, how beautiful it is. So it's one of the most beautiful things God has created is the earth. It belongs to all of us. We have seven billion people. No matter our religion, no matter our race, we all belong to this land. It may be called in 250 countries, that doesn't matter. But when you plant something in America or you plant something in China, it's going to grow, no matter what. So water is as important as it is in America or China. Similarly, a grandfather feels the same way for his grandson in America, and so does he feel in China. It doesn't matter. We are all connected, all right? Okay? I'm going to show you quickly. Would you like to see that film again, which, I, which was for BBC? Would you like to see it again? Yeah? Okay. So can you just close the light, please? Did I do my job well? Are you guys going to do something about it on your side? Listen, each one of you, I just have one message. Never lose hope. Never give up on your faith. Never stop believing in your dreams because miracles do happen. You just need to believe in yourself. You can make the difference. 
you can do it. Don't wait for the other person, just do it. Okay? Thank you for being with me, and I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Chris Kaz Bunbury. I'm a researcher, independent researcher in the Seychelles currently, and I'm part time lecturer in environmental sciences, tropical ecology. Um, I, th I thoroughly enjoyed the lecture. Um, I guess it was a very visual um, impression. Um, I, I see a lot of value in, in showing Planet Earth clips, I must say. Um, I appreciate the, the uh, educational power, let's say, of, um, of this footage. Um, I do think it is very important to get some of the statistics across. I think it's good that they are, their sources are provided in the CDs, as far as I understand. Um, I, I think some of the um, messages could have been conveyed a little bit uh, more clearly, either written um, or probably written down so that that, uh, that that is sort of supported by what uh, the speaker has said. Um, I think that would probably help to get some of these, these uh, the final sort of key points across. Um, from an environmental science perspective, um, I do think that um, especially the geography science, so the earth science students and the biological science students uh, also um, like to have a little bit of a broader understanding of some examples maybe. Um, and obviously the emphasis is on the scientific side rather than the sort of the creational side, I guess. But uh, that is my, my personal perspective, I guess. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Okay, so my name is Ron Limone. I'm 21 from the University of Seychelles. Currently on my third and final year. In the year 2013, I'll be finishing up. For the lecture today, I found that it was quite inspiring, especially for a student. I'm from the Faculty of Sciences, studying for computer information systems. For a person from the technological aspect, it was very inspiring because it lets us know like the impacts that technology could have on such a beautiful planet that we have. And uh, especially it allows us to have a perspective whereby when we, moving, when we are moving forward in technological aspects, we it will inspire us to think about the good things about our planet that the technology we are developing might affect. So it, it, it helps us in a way to make developments that will help our environment instead of just pushing forward. For example, solar power. Solar power is quite useful and handy in this situation as an example because it teaches us that we're using renewable source of energy which does not, which does not affect the environment, which does not produce greenhouse gases and which is good for the environment in itself. So that's one of the things I find inspiring about talks like these. So you found it was encouraging and what would you do now? Would you spread the message across? Well, on my part, I will spread the message as much as I can, but I'm one person. All I can do is spread the message, but along the lines, I'm sure it will help me in my own development. Like if I develop something, it will help me to think about the environmental aspect as well. How did you find the lecture, Professor Harshchenda? The lecturer, well, he was well versed in the topic, considering that he's not really uh, involved in the field of uh, ge well geographical studies, but he's well versed in the field. But I would understand uh, his knowledge since he's involved with the photography and stuff. So you enjoyed the lecture? I enjoyed it very well. Yeah, it was quite informative. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.